Yes. Sing it, George. On way, Lord. Yes, yes. Mm. And I on way.
Lord, I hear showers that are scattering full and free. Showering thirsty souls so refreshing. Lord, would you allow some of your drops to fall on me? Even me, Lord. By thou art blessing all over this land and country, all over this world. Would you allow some of your preaching power now to fall afresh on me? And Lord, I will be so very careful to take no credit, but to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. So speak right now, Lord. Speak right now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And then we said amen. And amen. God bless you. Choir, Sister Georgia, Lord, have thine own way. Have thine own way. My brothers and sisters, would you stand with me as we share in our scripture reading today? It's found in your bulletin. It's coming from the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 14 through 21. I've shared with y'all before, my big brother Scotty taught me a long time ago that if the Lord don't give you a lot to say, he will give you a lot to read. Can I get a witness here? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 through 21, and it's coming from the New Living Translation. Verse 14 says, either way, and I'll come back to that part, but either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. So, we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. feel like I need to say that again, but I'll move on. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And, we, and he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. The people said amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. My brothers and sisters, on this, the first Sunday of this new year of 2018, and those that I haven't had a chance to say, I want to say to you, happy, blessed new year. And we enter this year with a, with a great expectation. Remember, I told you all that our God is great. His word is great. Therefore, we are great. Can I get a witness? Let us be of one mind with the goal of becoming doers of the word and not simply hearers. And I'm not trying to bother nobody. I'm not trying to talk about anybody. But, you know, it's time for us to stop just listening to the word. And not doing the word. 
See, our call to worship challenges us in James 22, he says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are fooling yourselves. Can I get a witness here? See, my brothers and sisters, we have to get to the point that we realize that our strength, our hope, our greatness, our assurance, our health, our strength, our love, our forgiveness, all that we seek after is found in the word of God. The prophet Isaiah said it like this. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Not one dot, not one tittle shall be erased or shall fall. Away. God's word will accomplish what he sent it out to do. It will not return to him void. And we as a body of believers must make it our priority that we will do our very level best to live according to the word of God. Y'all don't mind? Can I pastor just for a minute? See, when you choose to spread malice or discontent or envy or jealousy towards your brothers and sisters in Christ, when you choose to be disobedient or not even care what your pastor or any other the leaders ask of you, when you choose to be your own person, live by your own ways because, your own set, because you are so-called set in your ways, you are going against the word of God. You're not hurting the pastor. You're not hurting the leaders. You're not hurting the church. Your issues is your relationship with God. The word of God will convict you of your faults. The, questions, the question is, will you repent and turn back to him? See, Deacon Roth, I'm under the persuasion that everyone in the house at some point in time gave their life to Christ. That everyone in the house, at some time in your walk, on this journey that God has set us on, you have accepted Christ as your personal Savior, as your Lord, your, your King. You have accepted him. And see, we know that accepting Jesus Christ means that you have accepted the word of God. Because in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. Can I get a witness here? The word of God is the gospel of Jesus Christ. From Revelation, I mean from Genesis to Revelation, every part of that is Jesus Christ. Can I get one more witness in the house? See, Hebrews said it like this and this is why Deacon Richo, it's so important that we hold on to the word because Hebrews, the writer in Hebrews 4th chapter 12 verse says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. In other words, I want to make this real plain. You ought to write it down or at least get it somewhere in your mind and keep it locked in there that you can't fool God. You can perpetrate in front of us. You can fool us. You can smile in front of us. You can say how much you love us, how much you love God. And God knows your every thought. Because see, some of us in the room, some of us in the church at large will say hallelujah on Sunday, but on Sunday evening outside in the parking lot, you're trying to send somebody to hell. Right. I'm sick right now, so I ain't, I'm not in control of my actions. I'm under the spirit here. I'm going to preach as long as God have me to preach. It's time out for playing church. It's time out for saying you love God but hate your neighbor. It's time out for you ducking and dodging your neighbor. Won't give him a hug, won't give him a handshake, won't say hello to him, won't say nothing to him, but then you love the Lord. How can you say you love God whom you've never seen and hate your brother whom you see every day? How can you do it? There's no truth in it, Dick. You cannot have two masters. You can't serve your flesh and serve God. You can allow your flesh to keep envy, malice, and hatred inside of you and thank God is going to keep on blessing you. 
Now, I want to make this real plain. God has given us air to breathe. That's why I asked Scott to sing that song, It's Another Day's Journey. Because you got reasonable health and strength. He's given you a heart that pumps blood through your body. Giving you eyes to see, hands to feel, feet to walk, a heart to love. But then when we crowd it, when we, when we crowd all of these gifts that God has given us with envy, hate, strife, and malice, my brothers and sisters, God is not pleased. I come to share with you all on today. That is already new. You already knew. Even though you are not completed yet, you are already new. Because our scriptures tell us, uh, 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 verse 17 of 2 Corinthians, that uh, uh, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, whether you gave your life to Christ today, yesterday, 10 years ago, 40 years ago, you are new and you're becoming newer every day. Can I get a witness here? See, I need some real Christian folks right now to testify with me that God ain't done with me yet. I still got some stuff in me that pushed in the right direction and, and pulled on in the right direction. I just might say or do anything. That's why I have to stay in his word and not just hear his word, but I got to do his word. I got to let his word manifest such a presence in me that everywhere I go, people see the word of God in me. Everywhere I go, everyone that I see, they hear God's voice. When I hug them, when I shake their hand, they feel in God's presence. When I pray for them, they feel the power of of the living God. My brothers and sisters, it's time out for playing church. It's time out for playing church. It's, uh, this is a new year. And this year, as I've told you all, our theme for this year is that we're going to become doers of the word. Now, if you know the Bible from cover to cover, if you know it all, if you have read it so many times and you got every verse lined out, then you ought to be ready to become a doer. And doing the word of God, look, 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 I got some good news for somebody in the room today. Because it ain't based on uh, uh, your intelligence. It ain't based on your degree. It ain't based if you went to a seminary. It ain't based on uh, uh, how well you can memorize it. If you're going to be a doer of the word, you know, you know what it's based on? It's based on the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. God's Holy Spirit will lead you and direct you that he may use you to demonstrate and to explain his word. All you got to do is make yourself available. You got to get real about this thing. You can't play with this. This is not a game. If you're playing with God, you're on your way to hell. I need to preach this. See, 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 Paul said, and you know, I know we started at verse 14 where it says either way, but I want to back up to verse 13 because Paul makes a good point. Here. He said, he said, if it seems we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. And if we are in, if in our right minds, it's for your benefits. See, 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 the preaching of the word of God is craziness to the world. By the foolishness of preaching. Come on, help me somebody. See, see, and look, look, you don't have to be behind the pulpit to preach. Can I get a witness here? Everywhere you go, you're a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And everywhere you go and every opportunity that God gives you, you are to spread the word of God. You ought to let somebody know that there is a reality in serving a true and living God. That he bought you with a price. He hung, bled, and died that you might live. And he's still working on you there because you ain't all that. You still will cuss in a minute. You still a fight in a minute. You'll talk about somebody in a minute. God ain't through with me yet. See, we got to let people know that when you join the church, when you get into the word of God, everything ain't going to be sunshine. Everything ain't going to be a bowl of cherries. Everything ain't going to be a bed of roses. You got to go through some stuff, but you got to stand and we got to let people know that when it gets hard, I heard somebody say, Deacon Frank say, when it gets hard, we pray to our God. Can I get a witness here? I heard somebody say, stop telling God, stop telling God about your problems. Tell your problems about your God. Can I get a witness here? Let somebody know that your God is bigger than your problems. 
Let somebody know that you lean and you trust in God. So yeah, I know what I used to be, but I'm brand new now. It's already been made new. I've been made a new creation in Christ. The things I used to do, I don't do no more. The places I used to go, I don't go no more. No more. The words I used to say, I don't say them no more because God is in me now. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I'm at very own. Even if I'm sick, even if I'm busted and disgusted, my God, my faith in my God lets me know everything is going to be all right. Can I get a witness in the house today? See, verse 14 says, either way, Christ's love controls us since we believe that Christ died for all. We also believe that we have all died to our old life. See, come on, somebody. You know, one statement that really gets me is a pet peeve of mine. One statement, you know what? I'm still the same old so-and-so. I ain't. I ain't the same old. I've been changed. I wish I could really preach this like I feel this this morning. Somebody said, oh, you know, it's still me. I ain't changed. I'm still the same one. Well, brother and sister, you need to get in the word and you need a change to come over your life because you are wretched and undone and on your way to hell. Can I get a witness here? But because I've been changed, Steve, I know that the angels in heaven done signed my name. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm going to sing and shout. And ain't nobody there going to put me out. Can I get a witness here? If he died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. My brothers and sisters, it's time for us to take this thing personally. It's time to set new priorities in our life. Our God is a jealous God, and if you put anything before him, you are out of order. Can I get a witness here? I've heard them all. I've heard them all. Well, I can't do so and so because uh, 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 I need to do something at home first. No, I ain't going tonight because, you know what, I don't, I don't heard it before, and they're going to sing the same old song, so I ain't going. Well, here come pastor with something else for us to do. I ain't going to do it. I'm going to show him I ain't going to do it. I wish I had some help in this room today. You ain't doing it for me. Everything you do in the ministry of this church and everything that we do is for the glory of God. We do it because God demonstrated his love towards us and while we were still yet sinners, he died for us. Can I get a witness here? And I, look, look, this is for free. It ain't even on my screen. It ain't even in my notes. That if you don't do the best you can for your God, don't think to your God to do the best he can for you. I know, I know, we paint a pretty picture of God. He's this faithful God, this beautiful God, this giving and trusting God, forgiving God. He's a loving God. He's an awesome God. God is a vengeful God. I wish I can preach this. In those commandments that Moses got on the hill, one of them said, you will have no other God before me. You will serve me. What did the disciples ask Christ? Say, Christ, which is the greatest of commandments? Either that thou shalt not kill, or thou shalt not steal, or thou shalt honor thy mother and thy father. And that. No, 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 no. He said, look, you need to love your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. You need to love him. And the second is even greater, equal to that, that you need to love your neighbors. See, 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 see we can gather in this house every Sunday. And, and, and look, I see, look, there's a big gap right there down the middle. Don't know it's because somebody didn't want to sit beside somebody or just somebody decided to sit somewhere else. But my brothers and sisters, it's time for us to get close. This is our fourth year. We're going into our fourth year together. Our fourth year. We started out talking about faith, hope, and love. How many of you know what love got to do with it? It has everything to do with it. How many know we walk by faith and not by sight? We trust in God to provide everything that we need. Then we ended last year with a confident hope. 
Our hope is built on nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. We, go, we live, we move, and we have our being because of this hope that we have in him that no matter what comes our way, for every temptation that comes, for every trial and every tribulation that comes, God will provide a way of escape. Can I get a witness here? And if you stand for God, you won't fall for nothing. Can I get a witness here? We have to believe that God has already taken care of it. God has it in our plan. And if we are going through it, it's because God wants us to go through it. I'm excited. I told y'all last time, and I'm still saying it right now, that I'm excited about what God is taking me through right now. When the world starts to turn and I can't get my balance, I am so glad and thankful for what he's taking me through because I believe that my greater is coming. I believe I'm getting close to my destiny because every time a trial, tribulation, or trial, Trouble come, it makes me stronger. When I am weak, he is strong. When I feel like I can't make it, when I feel like I can't get up, God picks me up and he turns me around and he puts me on stable and solid ground and tell me to go on, boy. I got you. Go ahead on. Preach to him even when you feel, don't feel like preaching to him. Go ahead on, boy. I got you. Tell him the truth even when you don't feel like it. That's the God I serve. That's the God I trust and believe in. I got a headache right now. It hurts me like all get out right now. But you know what? The headache that I got, maybe it's because that I want to give God my best. If this is my last sermon, if I fall out and die right now, I want to die giving God my very level best. I'm going to preach like I ain't never preached before. I'm going to testify and witness that my God is great. And he's greatly to be praised. See, 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 Paul wanted us to know. See, the reason why Paul lived the way that he lived and endured and spread the gospel the way he did, because he copied Christ. He wanted to live like Christ. How many you know that Christ suffered in his ministry? It was only three years, but he suffered in it. They talked about him, scandalized his name. Even after they beat him, and put that cross on his back, they still sped on him, threw rocks at him. Now, I know, I know some of y'all out there, you know, you know we kind of you know, sensitive. We sensitive. We don't want nobody talking about us. We want everybody to think well of us. We want everybody to, you know, you, you know when they call our names, it has a sweet harmony. It's like a sweet taste in everybody's mouth. Wake up, people. It ain't that kind of party. Can I get a witness in this room today? Everybody ain't going to like you. Everybody ain't going to agree with you. Everybody ain't going to stand with you. And those that may stand with you are maybe against you. Those that may call your name and give you a hug may be trying to stab you right in the back. But I got, look, 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 I got good news for somebody. If you just hold on. A change is going to come. If you just hold on, a change is going to come. See, 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 we got to believe. We got to, see, see, becoming doers of the word means we're going to take God at his word. We're going to believe what he says and we're going to do what he says. Just like in our call to worship, it says, for if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. My brothers and sisters, I want you all to know what you look like. I need us to get real close to the mirror. Now, now, now I'm going back to pastoring right now for just a minute. I want every member of progressives and even those that are not get real close to your mirror and look at yourself. Come on, help me somebody. I want you to get so deep in your mirror that you see all the ugly and nasty and filthy things about yourself. And when you see it, I want you to acknowledge it and I want you to pray to your God, Lord, change me. Lord, fix me. I want to be made brand new. I want to be better in 2018 than I was in 2017. I want to be better tomorrow than I am today. And the only way I can get there is through the grace and the mercy of our almighty God. 
See, I believe that's why Paul says in the same chapter, 2 Corinthians, and at verse 13, if it seems we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. Because I told y'all before, people still can't understand why such a great God would allow his own creation to crucify him, to beat him and to tear his flesh from his bones. Why would a great God do something like that for an ungrateful people? It's because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have, a court, but have everlasting life. My brothers and sisters, we are on our way to heaven. We are not of this world. We are passing through this world. We need to let the world know God wants to use us to draw people to him, because whether you want to accept it or believe it or not, there's still millions of people out there that have never even heard of Jesus Christ, have never even heard of the word of God. There may be somebody in your, uh, uh, in your world, in your sphere of influence, that really just don't know. They've heard about him, but they don't know him and it's up to us to make him live before people so that they may see the great works that he has done in us. How many of you are not ashamed of your past? To let somebody know, yes, I used to be an alcoholic. I used to be a drug addict. Yes, I used to do this, that, and the other, but I've been changed. God has got a hold of my life. I got a new direction. I got a, I got a new zeal. I got a new heart. I got a new path. I got a new voice. I got a new way of living. The old life is gone. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. We are ambassadors of Christ. Everybody know what an ambassador is? He's a representative to a foreign land for his homeland. I wish I could really make this plain, Steve. We are representatives of Christ in this world because we are on assignment on our way to heaven to be with God. Now, I know I can't make grown folks do nothing, Gerald. And you know what? I'm, I ain't going to try. Y'all ain't going to drive me crazy. You ain't going to cause me to stay up late at night. I'm going to do what God tells me to do. And he said, preach the word in season and out of season. He said, how shall, how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall he preach? Lest he be sent. I've accepted my call. I've accepted my assignment. So guess what that means, Progressive? Y'all stuck with me. Woo! Y'all stuck with me. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to preach uh, until I preach my last sermon. I'm going to be right here behind this pulpit. When they lay me down, I'm going to be stretched out right here. I ain't going nowhere. And while I'm here, I'm going to preach the word of God. I'm going to make it plain. I'm going to make it real. And if it cuts you, y'all know not to come to me. If you come to me, you better come correct. Am I right, Gerald? But the word of God can cut better than my knife can. And when it cuts you, take your cutting. Take your beating. Take all that he's given you. It's coming to make us stronger. Progressive, if we're going to make an impact in this community, in this city, in this dark and dying world, we're going to have to take some cuts, we're going to have to take some knockdowns, but we got to keep on standing on the word of God and let somebody know that it's for God I live and for God I'll die. And if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. We're going to continue to move on in the word of God. Can I get a witness here? See, all of this is for the benefit of God. We are, a, we are agents, ambassadors to reconcile God's people back to himself. Because, and I'm closing, God made him that had no sin. He ain't done nothing to nobody but tried to help them. To make real the word of God before them. 
And God made him that had no sin to become sin for us. God has raised him to the place of high praise that one day, somebody know where I'm going. One day, at the mentioning of his name, every knee, can I get a witness here? Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord, our God, our creator, our sustainer, our God, thought it not a, a robbery to be equal with God, to cling on to, but instead gave up his divine privileges and took on the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Can I get a witness here? Therefore, God, our great God, has elevated him to a place of high honor and gave him a name that is above all names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue that declare that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of the Father. I need to tell somebody here on the first Sunday in January in the year of 2018, our Savior, our God, our Creator came down through 42 generations, born of a virgin, lived among us, healed the sick, raised the dead, opened blinded eyes, 5,000 he fed. They took him and they took him from court the court uh, and they charged him uh, with love in the third degree. Uh, they beat him. Uh, they stretched him wide. Uh, they hung him on a cross. Uh, they lifted him up. Uh, I'm so glad today uh, is already made new because uh, my Savior uh, and my Lord, uh, my Jesus, uh, sweetest name I know, uh, the lily of the valley, uh, the bright morning star uh, hung on the cross uh, from the sixth to the ninth hour. Uh, I'm glad glad that he did because I couldn't do it but he looked down on us and said father forgive them for they know not what they do I'm glad today it's been made brand new all things have passed away behold all things are new he hung on that cross he died on Friday I'm so glad my Savior died because when he died they put him in a borrowed tomb I'm glad today it wasn't his tomb it was a borrowed tomb because as he stayed there all day Saturday and all night Saturday night I'm so glad today Reverend Brooks early on Sunday morning he got up all power in his hands power to make things new power to change your life power to give you a new way of thinking a new way of talking a new way of walking a new way of loving a new way of caring a new way of doing thank you Lord he's my savior and my rock he ascended into heaven seated on the right hand and every time I fall down he picks me up every time I do wrong and you do wrong he says hold up wait a minute let's put some grace in it save his soul he's one of mine I'm glad today one of these old days don't know the day nor the hour but one of these old days he's coming back he's coming back the wicked will cease from troubling the weary can be at rest I'm so glad today he's made all things brand new is there anybody here 
been made brand new. Is there anybody here have been changed? You ought to shout yes. If you've been changed, let me hear you say yes. 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 Oh, yes. I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. Thank you, Lord, for a Thank you, Lord, for new beginnings. Thank you, Lord, for new love. Thank you, Lord. All things, all things have become new. Church is new. My praise is new. My worship is new. My life is new. Thank you, Lord. It's a new year, a new season, new troubles new tribulations, new hatred, new envy, new jealousy, new strife, new malice, but it's the same God. I got the same God. I got the same God that walks with me. The same God. Shelter, bridge, love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. New mercy every day. New mercy every day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All things. The way I love my wife is new. The way I love my children is new. The way I love my church is new. The way I love his word is new. It's all brand new. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you right now, in the blessed name of Jesus, that thou would touch every heart under the sound of my voice. Lord, make them brand new. Give them a love, Lord, that surpasses all understanding. Give them a love, Lord, for their enemies. Give them a love for those that they think that have done them wrong. Lord, give them a new love, a new love for you, that we become not only hearers of the word, but also doers of the word. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with us, the doors of the church?